So that the sort of the three uh, pillars of a sustainable energy future are sustainable energy generation, uh, which is uh, hydro, geothermal, wind, solar. I'm also pro-nuclear. Um, I mean, I, I think it's, we, we should really keep going with the nuclear plants. I know this may be an unpopular view in some quarters, but I, th I think if you have a well-designed nuclear power plant, you should not shut it down, <laughs> um, especially right now. <laughs> um, so, um, but I, I try to say what I, what I think is uh, you know, scientifically cogent, even if it is not popular. For years, Elon Musk has been a visionary defender of bold and revolutionary technologies. From mind-bending neural interfaces to mind-expanding microchips, he has dared to dream beyond the limits of what we thought possible. And now, at long last, Musk has made an earth-shattering confession. Nuclear power holds the ultimate solution. In a stunning revelation, Elon Musk has just announced that a nuclear thermal rocket is the only way to reach Titan, Saturn's mysterious moon, in less than two years. This incredible propulsion system will leave traditional chemical engines far behind, with their slow journey of nearly seven years. Now you might be wondering, how will SpaceX, Musk's daring space venture, make this incredible idea a reality? Join us as we uncover the exciting plan that will transform space travel forever. Let's begin. We have even more nuclear energy in order to get faster independent from Putin and to yes. resolve the yes. climate issues. I, I want to be super clear. In my opinion, Germany should not only not shut down the nuclear power plants, it should reopen the ones that shut down. And those are, the, those are the fastest ones to restart. It's crazy to shut down nuclear power plants, especially like if you're in, in a place where there's not natural disasters. You know, so like if you're maybe somewhere where there's severe earthquakes or tsunamis or something like that, it's more, uh, uh, you know, of a question mark. As to, I mean, maybe, you know, but if, if there's not like massive natural disaster risk, which Germany does not have, then there's really no danger with the nuclear power plants. Is America ready for another rocket adventure? The highly anticipated follow-up flight of Starship is just around the corner, featuring an enhanced version of Booster 9 and an exciting collaboration with Ship 25. Scheduled to take place in a few months, this test comes while the memories of the first launch are still fresh. The upcoming mission will primarily focus on the first stage flight, exploring the potential of the booster, despite not incorporating the latest improvements from sibling ships at the production facility. However, fear not, as upgrades to the launch pad are expected to be completed within a month, followed by another month of testing before the next flight. Elon Musk, the mastermind behind SpaceX, revealed that Ship 25 is already at the launch site, eagerly awaiting a six-engine static fire test after undergoing pad flow preparations for over a month. Despite the setbacks encountered during the previous launch, including Booster 7 digging a hole and igniting a rock tornado, the next campaign is determined to finish on schedule. SpaceX aims to achieve rapid and complete reusability with the ultimate objective of launching from the same pad every day in future years. To make this possible, they have installed a water-cooled steel plate and deluge system beneath the orbital launch mount. These measures are in place to prevent a repeat of the flying concrete incident from the first launch. The sun is a, a nuclear explosion, a fusion explosion. That's what the sun is. It's an ongoing fusion explosion. So if you wanted to uh, add energy to Mars, like warm up Mars, the, really the source of almost all energy in the universe is fusion. Um, you know, e even fission is, um, originally there was fusion and then that, that that then later is. While SpaceX continues to make headlines with its groundbreaking Starship rocket, another company called Pulsar is quietly working on a spacecraft that might surpass even SpaceX's capabilities. Imagine a world where we can build a base or even a whole city on Mars. That's the audacious goal that SpaceX's Starship aims to achieve. But tucked away in a remote part of England, Pulsar's engineers are diligently developing a spacecraft that could outshine Starship in terms of capability. What sets Pulsar apart is their unique approach. While their ultimate goal is to provide commercial fusion power for Europe, they are taking a different path to get there. Rather than focusing solely on developing their own fusion reactors, like other companies such as Helion, Pulsar is building reusable rockets and plasma thrusters for satellites. 
here's where things get really interesting. The same technology used in Pulsar's plasma thrusters is similar to what powers magnetic confinement fusion reactors. By launching satellites equipped with this technology, Pulsar hopes to refine it and eventually transform it into a fully functioning fusion power plant. But that's not all. Pulsar recently made a groundbreaking discovery, a middle ground between plasma thrusters and full-fledged fusion reactors. They call it the Direct Fusion Drive, DFD, and it has the potential to revolutionize space travel. Pulsar plans to test and ship a functioning prototype of this engine in 2027, marking a significant milestone in their journey. Now, let's delve into the technical details. Traditional ion thrusters and Pulsar's plasma thrusters are similar in many ways. They both utilize electromagnetic force to propel tiny amounts of propellant at incredibly high speeds. These thrusters produce small amounts of thrust, but can operate for years on just a few kilos of fuel thanks to their high impulse. On the other hand, chemical rockets, like the ones we are familiar with, provide a strong push but have a weak impulse. They consume fuel quickly and can only burn for a few minutes. Fusion engines, however, offer high thrust while consuming very little fuel, resulting in a high impulse. This means that spacecraft equipped with a fusion drive, like the DFD, can carry more payload, travel farther, and reach higher speeds in space. So why is the DFD such a groundbreaking technology? Well, it's the only space propulsion system that combines both high thrust and high impulse. This unique combination allows for faster acceleration and longer sustained propulsion. While traditional chemical rockets can rapidly accelerate but burn through tons of fuel quickly, the DFD-powered spaceships can maintain high speeds for days on end. While SpaceX's Starship will likely continue to dominate the market for launch vehicles, Pulsar's DFD vessels could serve as crucial space infrastructure. Imagine a fleet of DFD spaceships shuttling hundreds of tons of cargo between Earth and Mars in half the time it takes a Starship. This would be immensely valuable for establishing and sustaining a Martian colony, where timely delivery of supplies and resources is vital. Imagine sending missions to Enceladus, Saturn's moon with potentially habitable waters, or embarking on a quest to find the elusive Planet Nine. Pulsar's powerful engine could make all these dreams a reality. NASA has been considering various speculative fusion vehicles that could potentially transport humans to the Proxima Centauri star system, our nearest neighbor, in less than 10 years. This mission isn't just a quick flyby, it aims to reach the Earth-like world of Proxima b within that time frame. If successful, these fusion craft, including Pulsar's Direct Fusion Drive, DFD, might play a significant role in interstellar travel. While the technology's effectiveness is still uncertain, Pulsar plans to conduct a test in 2027 to assess its capabilities. Even if the test goes well, it might take some time before the DFD can surpass the power of SpaceX's Starship or launch probes to far-off moons or reach Proxima Centauri. In the meantime, NASA's Dragonfly mission has become one of the most eagerly anticipated expeditions in the outer regions of the solar system. Set to launch in June 2027, the mission will explore Saturn's moon Titan, which possesses a unique atmosphere and a liquid cycle reminiscent of Earth's, albeit with methane. Dragonfly will be equipped with a mobile lander featuring eight rotors, allowing it to hop across the moon's surface and cover around 10 miles in each half-hour flight, significantly surpassing the range of wheeled rovers. The mission aims to investigate a region on Titan that spans hundreds of miles throughout its two-year duration. Dragonfly's landing site, the Shangri-La Dune Field near the Selk Crater, has been carefully chosen based on images captured by NASA's Cassini spacecraft during its mission to Saturn from 2004 to 2017. Scientists, led by planetary scientist Leia Bonafoy of Cornell University, have scrutinized these images to select the most precise landing site for Dragonfly. The chosen location offers scientifically intriguing features, such as an equatorial dry area occasionally experiencing liquid methane showers and containing dunes, small mountains, and an impact crater. Titan's environment presents a fascinating opportunity for astrobiologists to study primordial chemistry. While the rivers on Titan do not contain liquid water due to extreme cold temperatures, 
they carry vaporized methane and ethane that wash away from the water ice bedrock and flow into river tributaries, forming enormous lakes. Dragonfly's arrival on Titan in 2034 will provide an unprecedented chance to explore these unique landscapes. Furthermore, researchers from Princeton Satellite Systems and other institutions believe that a direct fusion drive, like the one being developed by Pulsar, could enable faster and more efficient travel between Earth and Titan. A recent paper published in the journal Acta Astronautica suggests that a fusion-powered spacecraft could carry more fuel and cargo, potentially reducing travel time to Titan from the currently estimated 31 months. The Princeton Field Reversed Configuration concept, developed at the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, would power this fusion drive. Utilizing a novel radio frequency heating method, the DFD undergoes ionization of the propellant before entering an area with a strong externally applied magnetic field. In the engine's core, a nuclear fusion reaction occurs, heating the propellant and producing thrust as it expands into a magnetic nozzle. The incorporation of a second fusion reactor for a closed-loop electrical power generator would extend Dragonfly's mission parameters and allow for a journey to Titan in less than two years. The future of human space exploration is increasingly relying on nuclear power. NASA's Innovative Advanced Concepts program has already started developing a nuclear thermal propulsion system, utilizing fission, which could significantly reduce travel time to Mars from eight months to just 45 days. Both domestically and internationally, nuclear power seems to be a leading candidate for powering spacecraft in the future. Exciting times lie ahead as humanity ventures farther into space with the promise of fusion propulsion and the prospect of uncovering Titan's secrets. Whether it's Pulsar's DFD propelling us to cosmic neighbors or NASA's Dragonfly mission unveiling the mysteries of Titan, these remarkable advancements will shape the course of space exploration and inspire future generations to dream of interstellar adventures. So, what are your thoughts about the utilization of a nuclear thermal propulsion system to study Titan? Share with us in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, show us some love by hitting that like button and leaving a comment down below. Also, if you're a fan of all things technology, be sure to check out this other video we've got lined up for you. It's packed with all the latest news, tips, and tricks to keep you ahead of the curve.